Now let's talk about nodes, branches, and loops in circuits. So recall our basic resistive circuit from last time. We had um, a 9 volt DC source and we connected just one resistor and we had a current that started from here and went around in this loop. Now as circuits get more complicated, um, it's helpful to establish some landmarks within the circuit. So suppose we had another resistor that we connected in our circuit like this. So the first term I'm going to define for you is um, a branch. A branch is a path through a circuit element. Okay, so for our resistive circuits here, the circuit elements that we have are resistors. So we have a branch down this resistor, and we have a second branch that goes through this resistor. And the second term I'm going to define for you is a node. The definition of a node is a connection point between branches. Okay, so we have a node right here, and we have a node right here, and that separates these two branches. And now what I usually like to think about is, um, I think of a node as a place where the current can split. Because if the current comes from this source, it's going to reach this node, and then it can decide either to take this path down this first resistor, or take this path down the second resistor, right? So the point at which it can split between branches is what I think of as a node. Now, the other node down here, if some current takes the first branch and some current takes the second branch, the current will reconvene kind of at this second node here and then continue on back towards the source. Now, something interesting ab uh, about nodes is that um, it looks like this point and this point in my schematic are geographically different points. But you have to keep in mind that this is a wire. So that means, connectiv connectively speaking, this is actually all the same point, right? This is all the same node. The same thing down here, this down here is also all the same node. Okay, so the last term is a loop. The definition of a loop is a complete trip um, around any place in the circuit. Okay, so the key things about a loop is it has to start and stop at the same place. I'll write that here. It needs to start and stop at the same point. Um, that point doesn't necessarily need to be a node. A lot of times what I like to do is I just start at this bottom left hand corner of my circuit and then the loop is if I imagine I were to walk around this circuit and come back to where I started that would give me a loop. Okay, So circuits oftentimes have multiple loops. I have this loop that goes around the outside I also have a loop that starts here and goes through this first resistor and back. I also have a loop that starts here and goes around this second branch and comes back. Right. So as long as you start in one place, you travel around um, a loop in the circuit and come back to the same place, um, that's the definition of a loop. So let's talk about this in terms of an example. So suppose we have um, a voltage source, maybe we have a resistor here, we have a resistor down here, and we have another resistor here, we have another resistor here. Okay, so if we were asked to um, imagine that we are current walking around a loop, if we start from the bottom left hand corner, and you can really start anywhere, I tend to start there consistently just because that's what I'm used to doing. 
Um, if we went around this outer loop, what are all of the circuit components that we would encounter? Well, if we start here and we go up in this direction, first we're going to encounter this V source. And then we're going to continue on this loop. We're going to encounter the first resistor. We're going to then encounter this third resistor. This is the fourth resistor. As we continue on down the loop, we'll, con we'll encounter this resistor and then we'll come back to our starting point. So as we're walking around this outer loop, um, first we walk through this source, then we walk through the resistor, we encounter this node, we walk through the second, the third resistor, the fourth resistor, and we come back to our starting point. 